is tonight that I stand out. The first one is confidence. And there's one thing about this meeting which gives me confidence, and that's the fact that someone from Senator Feinstein's office is here tonight. Thank you for that. And I would like to know, is there a representative from uh, Congressman Issa's office here tonight? Please raise your hand. Um, is the NRC in touch with Congressman Issa? It's under his jurisdiction, this, this area. Um, my uh, to my knowledge, he has not had any impact at all on this whole process. Um, have you people been meeting with him? Why not? What is his position? Why hasn't he said anything? The other word I'd like to speak about is sort of the fir very first word we got stuck on at the first question. That's the generic. Um, the lady asked a question about this to the NRC and it was not answered. So we're stuck on the first part. So here's a report which makes no distinction between storing nuclear waste in the middle of a metropolitan area and storing it in the middle of an Arizona desert. It's a report that makes no distinction between storing nuclear waste on top of an earthquake fault and one someplace that never has the earthquake, same with tsunamis. So this report is automatically suspect. It's not a serious report. This report is a whitewash. It's not considering the true facts. And as long as it's a generic report, this report is worthless. I think you better start all over and get rid of all the generic stuff. I think that's the message you should take home with you. Revise the whole report and get rid of any generic analysis. Now here's a couple other things. Uh, the low level waste problem is not really dealt with. It's whitewashed also. Um, if you, the NRC website said it adopts the linear no threshold idea that there is no such thing as a safe level of radiation. Uh, this also comes from the Beer 7 reports of uh, the biological effects of ionizing radiation. And the Beer 7 report says that all radiation is potentially dangerous and there's no such thing as a safe threshold. So low level doesn't mean it's safe. And uh, one thing I read in the first few pages, in fact, why aren't the pages numbered here? They're all in Roman. Roman. So on page um, 13.1.19 section, it says it's not going to consider at all uh, anything to do with class C radioactive waste or greater. That's the most dangerous. That's the most highly contaminated stuff. All of that stuff, all that rubble is going to go to Andrews, Texas. How are you going to get it there? It's going to go through four or five states, hundreds of towns, and this is not dangerous. So all that rubble that you blow up and destroy and all those pipes and valves and everything else that's radioactive uh, is, what about that? It's not really addressed in here. What about uh, class A and B, low level waste? Low level waste is not dangerous, according to the NRC, for the adult male, but it is dangerous to babies and children and the human fetus. So I'd like to see more about, about that. Um, one thing that I'd like to see is radioactive monitoring. There is no real-time radioactive monitoring available to the public. So when you have a dirty day and you blow up something and, it's, and the contaminant gets into the ocean and into the air, I think people who live in San Clemente or inland ought to know about it. I'd like to propose that you build real-time publicly available radioactive monitors in every town and city within 20 miles. Why don't you put the uh, dry cast storage inside the domes instead of blowing them up? Why don't you put them inside the domes, leave the dome there? So when it gets hit with a, a missile, we know that the whole place is not protected against high explosives. We know bunker buster bombs go through 20 feet of reinforced steel. Uh, this place is not safe. It was never designed to, to be safe from terrorist attack. And there's a million ways terrorists could attack this, this plant. And so that, that is not that can I, can I ask you to finish up for us, please? Okay. One thing we've learned from Fukushima, Chernobyl, and the other disasters is that the people in the nuclear industry and the NRC are professional risk takers. The fact that they switched to high burn up fuel, that was a big risky venture. Uh, we're hearing risk taking all the time. It's run by bankers, bankers are risk takers. Uh, so, uh, Please clean up this report. It has a lot of improvements needed. Thank you. Thank you.